Hey guys, I'm Fat Buddy Cat, and this is my Coleman CT200U. Today, we're going to try to fix the fork on this mini bike. The right side is still completely straight. The left side, not so much. I think when I ghost rode the whip, I put a little curve center from this bottom clamp to the axle. We are out about a half inch, and that is no bueno. In order to fix this, I do believe I'm going to have to remove the entire assembly. I'm going to have to bend that thing back somehow. And then we'll try to brace it so it doesn't happen again. A couple minutes, three wrenches, a screwdriver and a cooler later, and I'm the not so proud owner of this slightly twisted Coleman fork and let me tell you it's uh it's a little worse than I thought guys let's look at the bottom clamp and the axle you try to make a parallel out of that it's not gonna happen that's crazy even better than that is if you look at the top clamp in relation to the bottom clamp I'm not even sure that that was set straight from the factory hmm we're not going to know until we try to get the twist out. Okay, this side is flat on the floor from the axle to the top plate, or the top clamp, I should say. There's our axle on this side, and oh, come on, you see what I'm saying about a half inch? Where does it even start? I mean, those clamps aren't that bad. Maybe like a, a 16th on the side with the grip, and that's the side that we're looking at. But all of this, it looks like it's from here down. So, I'm going to have to hold on to this with something and pry this with something else. This is going to be fun. Check it out. I found the sweet spot. I actually think I went a little too much. I did. Oh, I was reefing on it just like this, pushing down right here. We'll flip it over and I'll work it back in the other direction. 
nothing but the basics and some safety equipment of course I just cut off a couple sections of one inch angle iron these are actually 16 inches long I then made a mark at 5 inches clean the fork off real good where I'm going to be welding and made some notches so that those five inch marks line up with our bottom clamp. I did the same thing over on this side. I'm gonna go weld this up and then we'll see what else we can do. I have my angle irons all welded up. This is the face. I wanted the thickest part along the back of the fork. I guess you could put it on the front too, but whatever. It's a go bike, not a show bike. I have these two pieces of flat stock, eighth inch thick, a few holes drilled. Those are for some rosette welds. These are eight inches long. I'm going to split the difference on both sides of this bottom clamp. So I have a mark at four inches. I'll bring this up center it and weld it home. Oh yeah, she's good and strong now. If this fork fails after this, it's going to be somewhere in the handlebar section or at one of these factory welds on the clamps. welds improve when I'm more aware of the metals that I'm working with. The idea here was to do all the heavy work on the gussets and to not go directly onto the tubing of the fork. You can barely see it from the back side. It's still a little bit warm. I'm just starting to clean it off. All right, we have thicker metal here and here, so we can go heavy and heavy. But where we're going onto the tubes of the frame, we just get some big tacks. Those are really hard to clean up. Not that it's really going to matter much. I'll do my best. A quick sandpapes, a thorough cleaning, and then I hit it with some lacquer thinner on a rag. Now, I'm gonna hang them up and smack them with some primer. I got to doing a paint correction on the primer. I thought to myself, this could really use a crossbar. I found a piece of scrap steel that I can wrap a foam pad around. 
and I just welded her on there. Might not be beautiful. I'd love to fill that one little pocket right there, but I really can't keep throwing heat at these. So, just going to send that. The nice thing about this stuff is it's so bright that it's hard to stare at it too long. It looks prime time. I still have to touch up a couple areas. But I think it's dry enough that I can pull it down off the Eiffel Towers. All right. I'll give that about 35, 40 minutes. Let it do its thing. And then it's right on to its final resting place. If this breaks after this, then we're going a completely different direction anyway. I'm going to change that out to a nylock nut, but so far, so good. It might look a little bit different, but it went on and feels about the same. We're hitting on the piton. Where are we? Well, we're hitting on the frame back here. Oh well. It's stopping somewhere. Pretty close to where it should be anyway. It's probably safer that way. Now, this could be tricky. I might need a longer axle. There's going to be less flex. So the stock one might run out of threads on the end. See what I mean? That's not too much. We get the nut on there and start tightening. We could flex it in or I could try a little bit longer axle and we might have to add some washers on the inside. I found a little bit longer of an axle. Not by much, maybe a quarter inch or something. But if we take the wheel and we try to hold it in place, I end up right about there if I'm in the center. That's really hard to hold still. Originally it had two washers, one on each side. I'm going to try to get two more so that I have two on each side, four total. I made sure to service the bearings in the wheel and in the neck when I had this all apart. So, technically, we're about as factory fresh as you can be without it being from the factory. I'm digging those handlebars. Now I'm really digging these handlebars. I added a cross pad and my grip is what else is going to work out that sweet new bump stop 
that we have incorporated with the fuel tank mount that stops our handlebars from turning too far and it is very close to the factory position I'm going to put my number plate right here it's actually going to be just like this one except we're going to go white that nub is going to be in the way it's kind of nice when things work out sometimes I'm going to grab one of my grinders and cut that off probably be best if I just remove the fork real quick leave the wheel on yep that's the way I'm going to do it I hope that's enough I already touched it up with the paint I just don't want it to be bulging out on the bottom from pressing against the back of this number plate if it barely rubs or touches that'll be all right I think we're going to be inside of that fork though so close if I go all the way to the left we're just a little bit beyond this little ridge right here we go to the right we're a little beyond but it's not quite as bad I'm gonna call that good enough it's only gonna be when you're turned all the way everything else will be all right these last three modifications may have seemed a little bit grassroots but they did take a little bit of effort and they were pretty well thought out we shouldn't have any problems from the seat gas tank or this new fork now we can get back to simpler times and working on the engine have a good night guys thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. I want you to stay here.